All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here. This is Russia in Revolution. This is for our unit or the unit Revolution and Resistance. So our objectives and standards are to explain the revolution led by Lenin and to summarize the difficulties Lenin faced after the revolution. And take a moment here to read the standards, if you would, please. <coughs> Excuse me. And our desired result, uh, how did Lenin and the Bolsheviks achieve control of Russia? Return of Lenin. Vladimir Lenin, uh, whose uh, picture or uh, whose image you see uh, in the uh, painting there or in the picture there, uh, and the Bolsheviks soon gained control of the Petrograd Soviet. They also gained power in other Soviets around Russia. By 1917, many Russians were believers of the Soviet cause. Lenin called for peace, land, and bread. In November of 1917, uh, armed factory workers stormed the Winter Palace in Petrograd. Now, they called themselves uh, the Bolshevik Red Guards, and they arrested the government leaders of the Duma. Now, Kerensky, who we talked about in our last lesson, uh, he and his followers will go mysteriously missing, um, and Lenin and the Bolsheviks will then seize control of the Russian country. A few days later, Lenin is going to order uh, that all farmland be divided amongst the peasants. He and his government are also going to give power of the factories to the workers. And Lenin, like we said, pulling the troops out of World War I, he's going to sign a separate truce uh, with Germany. And the truce will give away a good amount of territory, uh, which angered many Russians um, to the Germans. But um, at this point, Lenin has pulled the troops out of World War I. Now, Russia at civil war. Now, despite the territorial losses, uh, there were many others who were also angry at the murder of the Tsar, Nicholas II, and his family. Um, the Bolsheviks are going to face threats from their opponents, who will become known as the White Army. And some of the demands of the White Army were the return of the Tsar, uh, a democratic government, and they also opposed socialism, which obviously uh, Lenin was uh, a strong supporter of. Leon Trotsky, this gentleman right here, he's going to lead uh, the Red Army for the Bolsheviks against the White Army. So the Red Army is Lenin. Uh, the White Army is those who oppose Lenin. Um, from 1918 to 1920, Russia will be engaged uh, with each other in a civil war. So again, between those who supported Lenin and the Soviets and those who were against it. Now, Surprisingly, the United States and other nations will try to send aid uh, and support and troops, I'm sorry, to support uh, the White Army, but this will be with very little success. So some of the results of this. Within years of uh, fighting for three years, uh, 14 million Russians will die from the struggle or the famine, okay, because there was obviously destruction of farmland and hunger. So many people will die from famine, many people will die from the fighting them itself. Uh, there was also a widespread outbreak of flu. Um, now, the victors of this struggle will be uh, the Bolsheviks and the Red Army, so Lenin will keep control of the Russian government and of the Russian country. And with that, with the defeat of the White Army, um, it will establish a state-controlled society, meaning that the government will control society in Russia for many, many years. Now, the economy under Lenin. With Russia in ruins and the economy in a downturn uh, from World War One and also from the Civil War, uh, Lenin is going to move away from socialism a little bit. He comes up with this economic plan known as the New Economic Policy, or the NEP. And this is basically a smaller version of capitalism. So even though Lenin and many of his supporters are against capitalism, um, what he comes up with is kind of a smaller version of capitalism. It will allow uh, peasants to sell their surplus crops um, instead of giving them to the government, so peasants will be able to make some money for their own. Um, the government will also let the control of smaller businesses and factories to private owners. Again, remember, communism basically says that you know a lot of that stuff belongs to the state or to the government, so Lenin is going to kind of be a little more moderate here and allow people to keep control of their businesses or factories instead of um, the government. 
this uh, new economic policy or NEP will also allow for the encouragement of foreign investment. So also allowing countries from around the world to bring money into Russia as well. Now there's going to be uh, some changes in politics. Uh, the Bolsheviks are going to see nationalism as a threat. Obviously when you give people nationalism, people feel like their country's the best. Uh, people sometimes tend to want to start a revolution to try and make their country better, to be better than other countries. And that was one of the main reasons of World War I, if you remember, was nationalism. So to keep nationalism in check, Lenin is going to establish Russia into several self-governing republics under a central government. So different areas, different Soviets, basically, under the control of Lenin himself. So in 1922, Russia will officially become known as the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or the USSR. And it will remain that for many, many years. Today we call it Russia, but for, you know, about... 50, 60 years or so, uh, Russia will switch its name to be the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics or the USSR. The Bolsheviks, the party of Lenin, will also rename themselves the Communist Party after the writings from Karl Marx, which we talked about, you know, back around winter break or after winter break. Um, but they will call themselves the Communist Party, and that's where we kind of get the phrase of communist. Now, the Soviet Union and the Communists will represent a classless society that will exist after workers have seized power. Remember, we don't want the wealthy, we don't want the big, you know, nobles and stuff like that controlling the, the country or the government. The Soviet Union believes that the workers should have the power. In 1924, the Communists will create a constitution that's based on socialism and democracy, but in reality, the Communist Party will uh, have all the control in uh, the Soviet Union. There will be very little democracy. All right, so think about this. How did Lenin and the Bolsheviks achieve control of Russia? Think about the Russian Civil War and how Lenin was able to try and draw people to his side um, and gain control, and that will help you answer the question. All right, everybody, hope you have a good rest of your day or night, and I will hopefully talk to you uh, soon.